Hi, I'm Bonnie Barker with BonnieBayCrochet.com and today we're going to make the Easy Beginners two-stitch dishcloth. For this project, I'm recommending that you use any type of worsted weight cotton yarn. It's very important. You don't have to have this particular brand. You can have whichever yarn is available in your local area. Um, but it's important that it be made of 100% cotton because for a dishcloth to be able to be functional and to survive, that's just the uh, fiber that you need. If you try doing these with acrylic, I promise you they will rip up the first time you try to use them. Um, cotton is an excellent, excellent material. And I have some dishcloths that were made more than 15 years ago still in service in my kitchen today. And here are some stats on this yarn. Uh, we're not going to use all of this yarn. Uh, let me see. This has 2 ounces or 5.7 grams or 95 yards. I promise we're not even going to come close to using 95 yards. So if you have some scraps in your um, stash, um, you can feel free to use those. We are also going to need a size H or 8 or 5.00 millimeter crochet hook. For those of you who are brand new to crocheting, um, this is not a paid endorsement, but Susan Bates hooks are by far, I, I believe, the most easy um, and efficient hooks out there. Um, you don't have to have one with a fancy handle like this, although this is definitely really nice if you can find these. These are called soft um, handles, um, but just a regular old Susan Bates crochet hook would do just fine. And also recommend that you have a yarn needle for hiding loose ends and a pair of scissors. Okay, let's go ahead and start. Now to begin, we are going to make a slip knot. I'll do that slowly so you can see that. If you need more practice on any of the individual stitches, I do have many, many individual stitch videos right here on my Bonnie Bay Crochet channel if you'd like to look at those. I'll put the links down below. Now we're going to chain 25 chains, and I like to chain them in sets of five, and then reposition my tall man and thumbkin fingers to hold the fabric so that it doesn't move. And if I go in increments of five, in case somebody interrupts me, it kind of helps me remember where I was. So I know I have 10 stitches there. 15, that's 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and this is our chain. Okay, now we're going to work in the second chain from the hook. Here's the first chain. We're going to skip that. Now, if we did accidentally try to work in that, that's actually the same chain that we just made, and the chain would actually come undone. So we're going to start in the second chain from the hook. And we're going to work a single crochet. And the way a single crochet is worked is you stick the hook in the space, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through the two loops. Now this particular pattern is called a two stitch. And what that means is we're going to be using two different stitches. So we just use a single crochet. Now the next stitch is going to be a double crochet. We're going to wrap the hook before we stick the hook in. Stick it into the side of that chain there. Pull up a loop. We have three loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now we're going to go back to a single crochet. Stick the hook in, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And we're going to go back to the double crochet now. Prepare the hook by wrapping the hook. Stick the hook in, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now this is what we're going to do all the way across. We're going to alternate the short stitch, the single crochet, and then the large stitch or the tall stitch, the double crochet, single crochet, double crochet, single crochet, double crochet. I'll do a few more of these with you. Single crochet, and in the next stitch, a double crochet. This is going to look nice too with the variegated yarn. Single crochet, and then double crochet, single crochet, and then the double crochet. It has some nice spring summery colors. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this 
all the way across, single crochet, and then double crochet, and I'll show you the last stitch. At the end of the row, we've just worked a single crochet, there's one stitch left, and we're going to work a double crochet. Let's go ahead and, and take a look at what we have here. And it's okay if this is a little bit, little bit curved at the moment. That's going to change as we work more rows. Now, this is where it gets fun. We're going to turn, chain one, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to work a single crochet in that first stitch. And notice that when I work that single crochet, it was on the top of the double crochet. Then we're going to work a double crochet, and that double crochet was on top of the single crochet. So another way to say it is we work a single crochet, or the small stitch on top of the large stitch, and then a double crochet, which would be a large stitch, the tall stitch, on top of the small stitch. And what happens there is this is going to kind of even out as we go, okay, as far as the height. and. And you'll see once we get a few rows crocheted that it, it makes for a very interesting pattern. It's it's quite different than than just crocheting a straight stitch. And I really really enjoy um, the way this one works. So I'll do some more with you. Do a single crochet, making sure that it's on top of that double crochet, and then the double crochet, making sure that it's on top of that single crochet. That's kind of important in order to keep this pattern going. So I'm going to go ahead and work this all the way across. I'm going to be careful that I put the small stitch on top of the large stitch and the large stitch on top of the small stitch. When we get to the last stitch, we're going to work a double crochet in that last, in that last single crochet just like we did in row number one. Okay, so that you see where that single crochet was there, and I have a double crochet. Now we're going to turn, and the rest of the rows are going to be worked in the exact same manner. We're always going to start with a single crochet. Let's try that again. There we go. Always going to start with a single crochet, and it should be on top of the double crochet. And then we follow that with a double crochet. Single crochet. Double crochet single crochet and double crochet. So go ahead and do that all the way across and you're going to end with a double crochet in that last single crochet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and repeat this until this the size of the item is approximately a square and I'll show you how you can check that. Now that I've finished several rows, I wanted to show you what I have. I am not quite finished yet, but I want to show you how you find out when you're finished, when this becomes a square. The best way to do this is to take one corner and fold it over and then make a corner over here. So you make a triangle. Okay, so you can see I have a little bit further to go here. That's not quite a square, but once I get to the point where I take corner to corner, and this becomes a square, which it is not yet, then, then I'll know that I have a square. Okay, I've just completed 19 rows, and I can fold this over, I'll show you, like this, and I can tell that it is a, going to be a good square. Now, if you needed more than 19 rows to do that, this is perfectly fine. This is not a tutorial on perfect gauge or anything like this. This is more of a, you know, a beginner video where we're learning the, the basics. Okay, now I am going to put um, a little perimeter round around this to give it some continuity. So I'm going to chain one, turn, and I'm going to just work single crochet all the way across okay so just don't use any double crochet just single crochet in each stitch all the way to the corner and then I'll show you what to do when we get there okay I've just finished working the single crochets all the way across on that top edge now I've worked a single crochet in that last stitch I'm going to give it a chain one and I'm going to turn the dishcloth 
90 degrees to work along the row ends. And I'm going to put my first single crochet in that same place where the last single crochet was formed. Now working across the row ends is always a bit tricky, especially when you have different um, stitches like we have here. And this is the way I'm going to encourage you to do this. We're going to work a single crochet that's worked in that double crochet, work another one a little further down. So we have two stitches on that double crochet, two single crochets on that double crochet ending. And then I'm going to put one in that single crochet stitch, which was the last stitch of that row. Now, so we're going to work two and then one. And then now on this next double crochet, I want you just to work one, one there and then one in that next single crochet. And the reason we're doing it this way is if we put two stitches in every double crochet um, across, it's going to make this side bulge and it will not look like a square. Okay, so the repeat is going to be for every four rows, we're going to work two single crochets and then one in the single, then one in the double, and then one in a single. I'll work this row with you so it's not too confusing. So two single crochets in that next double crochet, and then one in the single, and then one in that double crochet, and then one in the single. Now it's time for two, two single crochets. And notice when I do the single crochets, I'm actually spacing them out over the height or the width in this case of that double crochet. I'm not sticking them in the same place. I'm putting one here at the top of the double crochet and then one in the like the midsection. Okay, and then one in the single crochet. Now we'll just do one in the double crochet and one in that next single crochet. Now it's time for two in that double crochet and then one in the single crochet one in the double crochet and one in the single and we end with working one two single crochets in that double and then one in that last single crochet and this is where we're going to chain one again and we're going to turn and this is going to be a little bit easier because we're going to be working across um, the chain but we're going to work that first single crochet in the same place as the last. And from this point on, we are going to work one in each of the chains, the remaining of the chain across. Sometimes it's a little tricky to work in this foundation chain. Um, let me show you how you can find out. If you're having a hard time seeing where to put your hook, you see the double crochet that was here and you see the place where it was connected, you just stick it right in there and there'll be two strands that you're crocheting over. But that's okay, that's what we want. And then we have, you see the single crochet here. So we stick our hook in there. We see the end of the double crochet, just stick our hook in there. And so this way, that foundation chain is gonna be completely covered up. And it's also another reminder to make sure that you crochet that on the loose side because if you crochet that very tightly there's almost no way that I can you'd be able to get your hook into that space. So go ahead and finish those single crochets all the way across the bottom. Now that I've worked that single crochet all the way across the foundation row it's time to make another corner. We're going to chain one and I'm going to work a single crochet in that same place where I worked the last single crochet. Now there's this strand here that was at the very beginning and we're going to need to hide that loose strand and I'm going to show you how you can do that with um, a yarn needle in just a minute but I'll show you another quick hack if you want to call it that. Um, and here we go. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to crochet over this while I crochet along this edge and I'll show you how to do that. You just leave that thread lying right there. Now we're going to start on our double crochet. So go ahead and do two single crochets and notice I'm crocheting over that yellow strand and it's going to be hidden in just a minute. 
and now we put one single one single crochet in that single crochet now we do one double I'm sorry one single over that double and then one in the single okay so we're gonna do that all the way across just like we did on the other two single crochets over that double and see I'm hiding that strand and one over that single crochet one two, see how many we did we did two over the double switch so do do one here and then one over the single crochet and I think that stitch is just about hidden a little strand rather two single crochets and then one now we do one single crochet on that double and then one on the single, two on the double and then one on the single, one on the single and then one on the single. I know I'm going faster guys, I'm sorry about that. If I ever am going too fast, just click on the bottom of the screen right about here for the right-handed it'll be on this side for the left-handed video there's a little button that you can push it looks like a little gear it's a little circle like a little gear head thing you click that you can just you can choose which speed to slow me down or speed me up if I'm getting too boring for you it's, it's kind of a cool little thing um, so where were we now so we did did um, one two over this and then one we're gonna do one and then one and then we're going to do let's see one and two here that's right now we're going to do chain one and we're going to join with the slip stitch to the very first single crochet that we did okay now we can end the project right here by fastening off but I'm going to do something else real quick I'm going to give it a little a little loop so in, in case you want to hang this up to dry when it's wet so let's go ahead and chain six seven eight nine ten we're going to crochet ten chains then I'm going to come around and I'm going to go ahead and just make a little slip stitch right there and I'm going to pull it kind of tight I'm going to give it a loop go ahead chain and I pulled it kind of tight there now we're going to fasten off we're going to leave a nice generous strand just like this make sure that this is really pulled tightly okay because you don't want this to come undone now I'm going to thread this loose thread into this and I'm, the goal here is I'm going to try to hide this as best I can I'm going to go ahead and put this to the back and pull it down because I don't want this to be the main thing that people stare at and I'm going to run this underneath the extra stitches here if you can see what I'm doing I'm running it underneath the single crochets that we just crocheted along the side okay so that, that should be enough so I run it under these I'm gonna pull this back it actually looks pretty good so I think that's enough and I'm gonna go ahead and clip this but I'm gonna be very careful that I do not cut my crochet stitches and I think that is pretty well hidden and go ahead and stretch this out a bit and we are done this is our easy beginners two stitch dishcloth and I thank you for joining me if you like this project please hit that little bell and subscribe if you will hit the little subscribe button so you don't miss any more of the new offerings that I'll be having come your way God bless everybody bye bye